Hi guys, Kevin here. Today I'm going to carve out and roast some winter squash. Then I'm going to fill the cavities with a scrumptious mixture of ground chicken, tomato paste, red wine, and smoky sage. I think the stuffed squash will make a terrific main course for dinner tonight. You can use regular green acorn squash for this recipe if you'd like. I'm using carnival squash. It's a really colorful, well, kind of psychedelic colored squash, very similar to acorn squash. And what you want to do first is make sure that the squash will stand up straight. So what I've done is cut off, I used a serrated knife, to cut off the little point that's on the bottom. And see the squash? It's going to rock and roll on the baking sheet. So here's the little point on the bottom. And I simply cut it off. And then, with luck, voila, the squash will sit upright. Then, remove a, the lid from each squash, uh, as if you were making a jack-o'-lantern. So I've already started this one and be sure to use a serrated knife because this squash can be really tough to cut. And we're going to save these lids. Okay. Then grab a spoon, I'm using a soup spoon, and we want to go around and just plunge the spoon into the flesh of the squash to locate the cavity. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Again, I'm shooting this video on my own, so it's hard for me to see what you are seeing. There we go. And then scrape out all the seeds and the fibers. And I'll finish these off and come right back to you. Okay, so this is my first time working with carnival squash, and I have to tell you, the rinds are much, much harder than the regular green acorn squash. So you might just want to go with the plain old green squash uh, if you wish to do a stuffing. And mine are done. I did one green and I did three of the carnival squash. So then let me move this out of the way. We set them on a baking sheet. I've lined mine with parchment paper. You don't have to. And then, and remember, save your lids. We're going to use them later. Brush the cavities with melted butter. Yum! The squash goes into a preheated 425 degree oven until it's tender. The squash, I mean, not the oven. And that will take about 40 minutes. Okay, <clears throat> while the squash is baking, Put one and a half to two pounds of ground chicken in a skillet set over medium heat and break up the chicken while it cooks. I'll let this brown and then I'll come right back to you. My chicken is fully cooked. So that for this next step, we need to transfer it to a bowl or a, I'm using a pie plate. And then we're going to cook up some onions. So my chicken produced almost no fat. It's very lean. So then add a glug of olive oil and swirl it around in the skillet. And then take one large diced onion. 
I diced mine. I don't know if you can see, but I diced mine in my little vegetable chopping machine. Here's the machine. And we'll give this a quick little stir just to coat the onions with the oil. And then we're going to let this steam over low heat for five minutes. And in order to steam, we have to put the lid on. So I'll come back in a moment. Okay, our onions are nicely softened. So now, return the ground chicken to the skillet. I'm going to break up this chicken a little more, make it a little finer. And then, I want to add some red wine, a nice splash, oh, about a half cup. And oh man, oh, the smell of red wine and onion and poultry is formidable and wonderful. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little more. And then you want to add six ounces of tomato paste. I've already taken mine out of the can and put it in a pretty blue bowl because I know I'd like to make things attractive for you. And we're going to stir that in. And you know what? I think I want a little, another little splash of red wine because why not? And we also need to add a splash of Worcestershire or Worcestershire. Do you know how to pronounce this stuff? Worcestershire sauce. It's absolutely delicious. And I wish you could smell this. I wish you were right here in the kitchen with me. We also have to add some salt. Just a pinch and some grinds of black pepper. And finally, oh, I'm forgetting the time. Add some time about this much. I'll have this recipe written out for you over on my blog. In fact, you'll even be able to print it out if you like. And then to hold all of these ingredients in a velvety suspension, you mix one tablespoon of plain old cornstarch with just enough cold water to make a thick paste and in it goes and then give it a stir. And you'll notice that this sauce will thicken right away. And we're good to go. I'm going to transfer this uh, chicken mixture to a bowl and then we'll move on to the next step. Would you believe I forgot to stir in my sage leaves? I have four leaves here that I snipped from my garden. And in order to chop these, you first roll them into a cigar shape and then just make thin strips. This is called a chiffonade of sage. And then you can chop that up a little more if you'd like. And then fetch your sauce. Mine is still quite hot, so no problem. These will wilt right away. And oh man, they smell good. 
Uh, there is nothing like fresh sage. Don't even bother with the stuff that comes in a jar or a little tin. It's got no perfume. This has that wonderful smoky essence. And there we go. I'm going to transfer this to a bowl and then we can fill our squash. Let me tell you about the squash. So the green acorn squash was done in exactly 40 minutes. Perfectly tender, so I removed it from the oven. The carnival squash, as I said, was really hard as a rock. It took a full hour to become tender. And as you can see, with all the fork, can you see all the little fork um, uh, marks? That's because I kept testing the squash to find out if it was tender. So anyway, it's time to fill the squash. And for this, we need a little spoon. And in goes the filling. And I am so sorry for, oh, there goes Avery. I am so sorry for forgetting to add the ground chicken or return the ground chicken to the skillet at the proper time, but no harm done. And of course I would forget the sage too. And I was so proud of that sage because I grew it, as I said, myself. If you don't have sage in your garden, by all means plant it. And if you don't have a garden, plant it in a pot. It's a perennial herb, so it comes back year after year after year, and you'll love it at Thanksgiving time when you have stuffing to make, or any time you need this uh, little hint of smoke. And I'm going to stuff the squash a little bit higher than the opening, just for drama. And, then we are going to add just a small amount of shredded Parmesan cheese to the top. Like so. This isn't much. This isn't even really a tablespoon. And then we will return this to the oven for, oh, five minutes, just, just for the cheese to melt. So I'll come back. So put the squash on a plate and to make it extra attractive when you're serving just put the lid on top like this and then your guests can pull the lid off and voila they have this beautiful meal in front of them and you can also for yourself anyway pour out some Cabernet Sauvignon because Lord knows you deserve it. Cheers. And then use a spoon to eat this. And what you do is, let me move this a little closer, scrape against the squash and into the filling. Absolutely delicious, people. Let me move the camera up so I can talk with you. You guys, the filling in this thing is chickeny, whiny, tomatoey, sagey. It's absolutely delicious. Hang on, Avery, the dog wants to come in. Come on in, sweetie. Yes. She knows I've been cooking something delicious and she's been going nuts outside the kitchen door. And the squash, by the way, the carnival squash, even though it took longer to cook, it has kind of a unique taste. It's a little, it's sweet, like the green acorn squash, but it has a uh, sort of a nutty flavor. Mm. Again, really delicious. And I should probably mention 
that you could bake the squash well ahead of time, several hours ahead of time anyway. You could even make the filling ahead of time and then just assemble the squash about 45 minutes before your guests arrive, pop it in the oven uh, just to warm everything and then serve it. So I hope you'll give this video a nice thumbs up. I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'd like to thank all of you who have been subscribing. It really makes my day. And uh, please post a comment below. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.